Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, not even one week at my new job at the Bicycle Factory, and already I'm a spokesman. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Habsburg Eclipse from Victory Point Games and Tabletop Tycoon. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Habsburg Eclipse, The Great War in Eastern Europe, 1914 to 1918, from Tabletop Tycoon and Victory Point Games, one player takes on the role of the Habsburg Monarchy as it attempts to thwart its enemies and survive World War I. Now this is a States of Siege game. It is a reprint game from the earlier Victory Point Games company, um, and it has been released now through Tabletop Tycoon. Now essentially in this game, you, uh, as I say, it's States of Siege. You have various tracks leading to Austria-Hungary. Uh, leading to Vienna. So what you're doing over the course of the game is essentially you are fighting to keep the forces of your enemies away from the capital. Now at the beginning of every round, you draw an event card. This is the event phase, and you look at the event card and you resolve it, top to bottom. Essentially, usually the first thing you're going to see is a number of flags that represent the different countries that are marching on the tracks toward you. When you see those flags, you go ahead and you advance them the next space over on those tracks. They're getting closer to Vienna. Next, the card is going to have you test loyalty from the constituent uh, nationalities of Austria-Hungary, either the Croats, the Czechs, or the Hungarians. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to roll a die and look at that, the marker on the loyalty track. If that nation's number, if the number you have rolled is equal to or less than the, uh, their loyalty number, their loyalty decreases. They're heading toward a revolt. But if you roll greater than that, then they stay where they are. Next, the card will tell you how many actions you get that round. And there are different things that you can do with your actions. Now, for an action, you can go ahead and launch an offensive along any one of those tracks, one of those fronts. You roll a die. And if your die is equal to or less than that number, nothing happens. But if you roll greater than the number, then you force them back on their respective tracks. Now, one thing you can do is allocate resources. Now, in the event deck, sometimes you will see an off off-board battle will occur. And usually these are battles in Western Europe or, or, or in Russia or naval battles. And you won't fight in those necessarily directly, but you will be very much affected by the outcome of those battles. So what you can do is you can actually, for two action points, you can spend a uh, kind of a resources and place it on one of those other fronts, the Western Front, Eastern Europe, or, or uh, the Naval War. You place that there, and what that means, when one of those off-map battles comes up, you can roll the die, and if it's in that region and you have those plus two, you get plus two uh, dice roll modifier for that roll. Hopefully, you can win that battle. Now, along the Carpathian front, where some Russian armies are coming, you can actually have a, a fortress of Presmil, and every time the Russians go through, they're going to degrade it. It starts at a three, it goes to a two, and then a one, then it's off the map. You can, if it's damaged but not destroyed, you can actually spend money to repair it, provided the Russians are not past that track and close to Vienna. You can influence national loyalty. Essentially, you do a loyalty check, but in the other direction. You can roll to see if it moves up. If it's equal to or greater than that number, it moves up. If it's less than that number, nothing happens. You may also be able to trigger the Great Retreat, essentially removing the Polish track from the game. Now, once you get to a certain point in the game, you're going to have the Kaiserschlag battles. These are the uh, German emperor really going all out against his enemies toward the end of the game. And you're going to play through a number of these battles, just like your regular off-map battles. You're going to play through them, but you will keep playing through them, and they will have important effects on what's going on for the rest of the game. 
Next, you need to check to see if those Russian forces are past Presmol. If they are, then you need to reduce the fortress. Then you need to check your national will. Now, what you're going to do is, as I mentioned, you have those off-map battles. Now, if you win those, they go into the winning section. If you lose them, the losing section. Or if they're stalemate, they go into the stalemate section. You want to have more wins than losses. Because what you're going to do is you're going to look at how many wins you've got. You're going to subtract how many losses you've got. You're going to subtract if any of your enemies are in certain kind of uh, sensitive areas. They're, they're, they're getting close to Vienna. They're on Austro-Hungarian territory. You're going to take those numbers. You're going to essentially subtract them from the battles you've won, and that will give you your national will for the uh, for that turn. Uh, generally, it's going to be trending downward. Occasionally, you can work to get it up there. You want to win those off-map battles. Now, there's some various tokens you can get in this game. Uh, you can get the German general staff to help you. You can get von Maxen and his artillery to, to, to kind of shoot back along those... Um, offensives and try to push back your enemies. So there's some different tokens that'll come out that can help you during the course of the game. Now the card decks are separated into three eras, kind of the beginning, in the middle, and, the, and toward the end of the war. And this is kind of to help you get through kind of a historical uh, sequence of events, roughly, that played out during the battle. Now at certain times, uh, you will go actually go ahead and it will tell you to mix in the next deck. So you'll actually shuffle the current deck, what's left of the current deck, in with the next deck. So you may have a few little things that occurred out of sequence as they did historically, but generally you'll get a flow of the historical progress progression of this war for the Austro-Hungarians. Now you will lose this game instantly if ever an enemy army uh, makes it to Vienna. If an enemy army occupies Vienna, you lose the game. If ever all three of the nationality tracks, that's again, that's the Croats, the Czechs, and the Hungarians, if ever all three of those are in a state of revolt, you lose the game. And if ever your national will is at negative five, you lose the game. But if you succeed in making it through all three eras of the event decks, then you win! Habsburg Eclipse, the war in Eastern Europe, 1914 to 1918. Uh, this is a game that I got from Victory Point Games back in the day when it first came out. It was, you know, kind of a, it had the, the puzzle map that you put together. Um, the production quality was functional. It wasn't great. But it was a great game. I really, I, it, this may have been the first States of Siege game I played. Um, certainly, this is probably the first one that really got me excited about States of Siege. And I, I, I really did. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. And it's one of those games that I thought deserved more love and attention than it got. And it never it never caught on the way um, it should have. Well, fast forward now, what is it, 10 years or so, 10, 13 years, and it's got this great new production. This the, the box is beautiful, the board is beautiful, cards are beautiful. Generally, everything here looks really good. My only real complaint, and it's a legitimate complaint about the production, is the text on the cards is microscopic. I was straining to look at that. It was really tough. My, my eyes are getting old, you see? So I, that was a bummer. I was really upset that the cards, um, it wasn't easy to read the cards. I thought there was maybe, maybe a little too much text and they just had to shrink it all down there. Uh, maybe they should have edited some of that out. I don't know. Gameplay uh, is a lot of fun. Gameplay here is a lot of fun. Now, as I say, it's a States of Siege game, but once you get it, once you know what's going on, you're just ripping through those things, and you're adjusting the tracks and the markers. And what I love about States of Siege games, and this game in particular, is it they just tell great stories. And this is a great story. You know, it's like, oh, I just barely pushed back that army before it got to Vienna. Oh, no, but the but the Czechs are on the verge of, of revolting, you know. Or, or, oh, no, there's a fight on the Somme, but ah, we lost it. I mean, it's a story, and it's a great story. This is a wonderful solitaire game. I absolutely love Habsburg Eclipse. Um, I highly recommend it. In fact, I can't recommend this game enough to sol solitaire players. It's just a great one-player game. You've got this great theme, great story, great production, minus the card text. It's, it's fantastic. So recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Habsburg Eclipse is buy it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, I ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. I'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history, fun things like that. Please check that out. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate it.
I'd also ask you to please leave a thumb for this video on Board Game Geek that helps us out a lot. And if you are a fan of the channel, if you like the content we bring, please click on the Super Thanks button here on the uh, YouTube page and leave a contribution. Again, we would really appreciate it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I recently had dinner with some cannibals. But I couldn't get past the handshakes. Please somebody.